Welcome guys to a sort of off the cuff video. I just fancied really relaxing and chilling out in VR. So if you want to join me for this short little flight we're going to do from East Midlands using this beautiful Orbex rendition scenery, looks amazing, uh, to Luton. Now, I must confess, this video was inspired by the latest Stevo Wong Canivo video. His latest video is just a wonderful, incredible flight of uh, sort of a, a sunset flight into the night. Uh, and it just reminded me how much I used to love flying uh, in VR at night time in the uh, Oculus, o Oculus, Oculus Rift CV1. Pause. System test. Okay. So we're going to start this TBM up. We'll get it going. So what we need is the ignitions on. Ignitions are coming on. We want our auxiliary fuel pump on. It gives us that nice whine. Uh, and then we're going to start her up and hopefully, in fact, tell you what, let's just bathe the cockpit area in a bit of nice lighting for you. So you can see, oh, that looks amazing. <laughs> I'm going to try not to use the word amazing too much because I do use it a lot this last few videos uh, and I'll, I'll try not to because it, it gets annoying even I get annoyed with it myself so hopefully we'll get a nice start introduce some fuel watching the ITT rising there nicely no hung start or a hot start looking good I have had a, a hot start in this aircraft it's pretty scary but it's looking like today we're gonna get a good start and that's what we want particularly as this flight is designed to be a stress buster relaxing flight so I don't want anything too stressful to happen Okay, that's good. Parking brake set, so we'll put the auxiliaries on auto. Ignition's on auto, we'll put the generator on. Fuel select switch can go to auto, that's down here. One less job to do. Uh, and AP trims can come on. Our inertial separator can come on along with the pitot heats. If I can do that, that's it. Uh, and we'll put our air conditioning on and bleed air on. Some people have asked me why do I use the laser pointer, well if I went any further than about there I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit my computer there. Uh, now a lot of sometimes when I'm flying I will kind of just zoom in a bit so I can use the controls. That, that is not to zoom in to look at the instruments obviously, I don't need to do that anymore. But it is nice to be able to feel like I'm touching the dials so I do kind of move around the cockpit here. I'm using my CH Eclipse show to kind of just move around. I've got some buttons and the hat switch set so I can just easily navigate very easily in the cockpit. In case you guys are wondering. Right, so we'll put our headphones on and we'll get ATIS, which is already set. East Midlands information Charlie. Staring down that runway, I think we are ready to go. So we'll do a rolling takeoff. And we'll set our power. Takeoff power is set. I am really terrible at holding the centre line. I'm, I really must pay attention to that more. And let's have an amazing look over our left shoulder at the incredible scenery as it goes by. Look at that. Just look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? All of the lit buildings, the car park, you see the cars there. Oh, it's just amazing. Bathed in all that gorgeous light. Already, and I've only been in VR about 10 minutes, I'm feeling more chilled out. Okay, flaps up. We're not going to go very high really, about 4,000 feet will do us nicely. 
uh, your damn Peron autopilot on, nav mode, and we'll just FLC. So we're up, we'll get up to 4,000 feet in no time at all. Just look at that, I'm not sure if that's coming out in the video, but how the actual road is being reflected onto the wing. <laughs> oh, look at that, that is just... I'm trying not to say the word amazing, because I say it too much, but it really is jaw-dropping. Yes, I'll use that word. It's just fantastic. Oh, God. What a wonderful way to chill out. Right, inertial separator can come off and landing light can come off. So how do you guys chill out if you've had a really stressful day? I'd like to know. Let me know in the comments. But I know for one, if I can grab even a half an hour flight, just to really just chillax. Watch that torque rising there. So yeah, it's only like literally like 15 minutes and then we'll be at Luton. Not a very long flight at all, really. And just to let you know how I set the flight up, I basically, as soon as my computer turned on, I, um, I plugged my reverb into the USB to power it up, put the headset on, and then obviously the Windows Mixed Reality software spooled into life. And at that point, I just stayed in VR because the resolution's so good that I just worked from the desktop at that point. But once again, just a massive thank you to everybody who supported me uh, and watch some of my videos, you know, and uh, I'm interested in all your opinions. I think, I do think VR in general is a very subjective and personalised thing. It's a very personalised experience and what might work for me might not work, it might not work for you basically. Um, a lot of people who have bought reverbs are having some issues, be it build quality issues, which is a, such a shame, uh, or perhaps they're struggling with the sweet spots or they're finding it a bit blurry or but it really is it's got to sort of match your face and your eyes and your IPD is so important and unfortunately with these newer generation headsets most of them don't have a manual IPD adjustment so it, they are very very limited and I'm not really sure if the, uh, the software IPD adjustment even really works that well to be honest but as I say, my IPD is in the sort of optimum range. That's probably why I'm having such a great experience with it. But if you are on the lower end or on the higher end, it might not work for you so well. But, uh, yeah, no doubt, this, this experience... In fact, let's just turn the lights down a bit more. At night time, it is so much better. And I have no idea why, because it's the same LCD stripe RGB type display the Rift S has, but it just doesn't seem as brightly lit at night. I don't know. I do wonder if some of that is probably the colours as well, because the reverb tends to have more natural colours, where the Rift S is very vivid. Uh, which looks great in some games, but sometimes it can look a little bit too gamey, if that makes sense. This is really gorgeous, really nice. A real perfect way to chill out. Now, also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to uh, Sim Hanger, a fantastic YouTuber who does really polished reviews and videos. Uh, he gave me a little mention in his last video I really do appreciate that and I'll I'll uh, return the favor if anyone doesn't know of him please check him out and I'll put a link in the comments below I honestly I'm just so pleased that we have a headset like this for flight sim I really am I am so done with lower resolution headsets I know a lot of you know a lot of you the field of view is very important and I find the field of view in this, although obviously not 
amazing, it's perfectly adequate, but I'm used to the CV1. I think the Rift S has a lower uh, field of view, slightly narrower, but uh, this feels fine. I think this feels a bit wider than the uh, Oculus Rift, definitely. do now I think we'll just tune into London Luton a test to get ahead of ourselves because we're going to be there before you know it now I was going to do an ILS but I think to be honest quite surprisingly the uh, visibility is really really nice out there stars are looking beautiful I could almost be an elite dangerous <laughs> yeah that night sky out there is far better wow I'm loving this kind of hazy cloud layer here as well you can just see the uh, the aircraft lights picking that up but yeah we're gonna just do a uh, a VFR kind of uh, circuit, I think. Departing runway two six. Advise on initial contact. You have tango. We've gone right over the top, so we're going to make a right downwind and go right over the M1. I hate the M1 with a vengeance. Thankfully, I don't have to use it all the time, but I do tend to use that particular stretch of the M1 at least a couple of times a month and that's enough for, <laughs> that's that's enough for me oh this is just a perfect way to just relieve that stress watching all of those commuters down there still doing their journey homes and I feel like a million dollars sat in my TBM looking down on there saying yep yeah, this is the way you got to do it guys you need a TBM of course this is Orbex uh, True Earth scenery and this is it in its full kind of nighttime scene although a lot of these uh, lights and Pro will probably be ultimate weather as well so there's a few things going on here look at the traffic there that is quite a convincing scene in, on the M1 right there take a screenshot there it might do a stutter but yeah I don't want to be in that today no thanks alright let's concentrate let's go back to put these lights off wow that feels dark all of a sudden now I don't know how this is going to come across in the YouTube I would fully recommend if you haven't already to switch turn down your lights make yourself a brew or something stronger uh, and enjoy the video that way because I think otherwise it's not really going to come out very well not many youtubers you uh, do sort of night videos of any description and I can see why they don't really come out that well It's funny, I don't, I mean, you do get a bit of glare, actually, but nowhere near as bad as the original CV-1. And I haven't tried a Valve Index, but I think if I was in a, in a Valve Index right now, on this approach with this beautiful cockpit in front of me at night time, I would be having a horrible time with glare. It really is great to be back flying at night time again. I am way too high, but I don't really care. We'll make it, it's a big enough runway. Sink rate. Sink rate. Pull yeah. up. Doing a bit of a tactical landing Pull here. Up. <laughs> Pull up. Sink rate. 
Should we have got our landing lights on yet? Yeah, we have. Okay. Oh, this is just an amazing scene. Oh, wow. That is it. Oh, I'll try not to use Sync the word rate. amazing. Sync rate. Screenshot Sync time. Rate. Sync rate. Taking pictures on finals. Sync 500. Sync rate. It's all right, bitching belly. Don't worry, we've got this. We're okay. I could really honestly be doing this in real life right now. It certainly feels like it. We're way too high in the glide slope, but it's okay. Ha! <laughs> oh, wonderful. Absolutely. It's just fantastic. But we are really high. <laughs> Okay, let's bring her home. On the center line. That wasn't too bad. Air speed. I love the way this thing stops. Actually even made our turning. So yeah, just a very quick little cheeky video. Just to let you guys know, I'm still loving the reverb so, so much. Any sort of bad points are completely outweighed by the fact that it's just the most amazing, beautiful, crystal clear display, for me anyway. Uh, the black levels are fantastic considering it's an LCD of course it certainly is the best around in terms of uh, if you compare it to OLED displays it's, it's the next best thing really oh, I will never ever get bored of this let's just park in here somewhere I think this will do nicely Oh, hello. That made me jump. A Boeing 737 has just suddenly appeared. So, I've got, yeah, as I said, I've got an Aerofly video coming soon of my impressions of that. As well as Elite Dangerous. DCS, there will definitely be some of that coming soon. Uh, and, as I say, I really do appreciate all of you guys watching my very unpolished, very amateur videos. Compared to a lot of YouTubers, I'm certainly nowhere near the standard that they are. Um, so I do really appreciate you watching and just coming along for the ride, really. God, that was just wonderful. I've done all that wrong, actually. I should have... <laughs> I don't really want to put that on again, I suppose I could do, just to make sure I've got everything down as it should be. Yeah, I do like to look after my TBM at least somewhat fairly realistically. Thanks for watching guys, as always. And I'll see you on the next one.